Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from King's Landing Sport Fishing. Uh, one of the questions I often get asked is how I spool up my reels. Um, there's a number of different ways to spool up your reels. Myself, personally, I prefer the uh, reverse spool method. And I'm going to show you how to do the reverse spool method today. Um, this video is actually going to show you uh, me setting up a torpedo weighted steel 100 onto a uh, Dakota 600 using a 100 weighted steel and then using some 40 pound uh, braid as a, as a backer. So, uh, you know, what do I, what do I use? What do I need? So with the reverse spool method, you actually need two reels. So you'll see here, I've got two Dakota 600s. Um, I have a spare reel of every reel that I, uh, that I use on the boat. Um, this is my spare 600. Um, it's not a, it's not in great shape. It needs some uh, work, but it's great to, uh, use for reverse spooling. And what you'll notice, I've got an old, uh, I've just got an old section of a fishing rod that uh, broke off, and I've used it. I've got one rod, one reel in the in the reel seat, and then the other reel, I've just got it on there with a couple of uh, hose clamps. And this is my reverse spool rig. And what I will do is I will actually backward spool everything onto this reel right here, the one on the end, and then when I'm done, I will then set the drag as tight as I want, and then I will spool it onto the other reel. Um, this really does a couple, this has a couple of benefits. First and foremost, if you don't know how much backer is going to fit with a particular, um, line, whether it be weighted steel, lead core, copper, this is a great way because you put on your, uh, you put on your segment that's most important. So like today I'm using a 100 on these, uh, Dakota 600 LCs, and then you spool up the rest afterwards and whatever fits is what fits. Um, the second thing is. Um, just trying to spool reels on your own, it's it's very difficult because you can't get enough tension on uh, on the line when you're spooling it onto the reel. And that's where the reverse spool method comes into play. Because with this particular method, once I've got everything on that, on that reel right here, I can just basically put it on my body and I can just start cranking uh, the line and I've got lots of, uh, I've got lots of tension there. So that's, uh, that's really helpful. So, um, Let's, uh, let's dive right in and uh, talk about how I do this. So first of all, all of my reels, I have a very small section. It's probably about five or six feet of monofilament line. That is what I use to tie. Uh, I start every one of my reels with about uh, five, seven, eight feet of monofilament just because it doesn't, it doesn't slip on the, on the reels uh, versus braid. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, as I'm trying up this uh, 100 weighted steel, this uh, 100 weighted steel, um, as per the little sticker t torpedo gives you here, let's see if I can get that to focus. Um, you know, it goes, uh, it goes 20 feet, just does not want to focus there. Let's try that. There we go. As you see, 100 around 2 miles an hour goes down about 20 feet. So this particular uh, rod that I'm spooling a 100 on, I will use this for a couple of reasons. First of all, this will often be my uh, the shoot rod on my boat. It'll be the rope that I put the rod that I put right down the middle, and I will use this in that you know twenty foot range for uh, for coho and for steelhead. In addition, it's a rod that I will also tie on some snap weights if I if I want to get it uh, want to get it deeper. So that's where this rod will come into play. So first thing I want to do is I want to tie on my leader. So in this particular case. And I don't need a crazy knot now because I'm going to be reverse spooling everything off, as you know. Um, I'm going to tie on a 25-foot section of this stuff right here, the Torpedo Superior Fluorocarbon. That's what I'm going to use to start. I've already peeled off 25 feet of this beforehand, um, about four of my uh, four of my arm lengths. So I'm just going to tie that up with a couple of overhand knots. Nothing crazy because this is not a, this is not a permanent knot by any means. So I've got that tied up, and now I'm just going to wind that on to this reel. And that's the first step. I need my leader. And as I wind that on, I'm getting it all tangled up, of course. So now, here we go. Keep winding. Be nice and simple. First stage is almost complete. Now, for the second stage, I am going to need to get uh, this fluorocarbon leader connected to the weighted steel. And what's really neat about the, the torpedo now is they've actually got these neat little termination kits. So I'm not sure if you can see this right here. These are little termination kits. They involve uh, 
They involve a piece of shrink tube, a small swivel, and uh, and uh, and a crimp. So I'm gonna get one of these right here, and these swivels, and I'm gonna I'm gonna flip cameras so you can see because it's so small, um, but they're 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 plenty strong enough. These swivels right here um, are uh, what we use to connect the braid a backer or the fluorocarbon leader to the weighted steel. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this up to uh, I'm going to tie this up to my uh, to the fluorocarbon with whatever my your favorite knot is. So in my particular case, those of you who watch my videos know I, I'm a big fan of the uni knot. So I'm going to take a uni knot here, and I'm going to tie a uni knot to this to hold it uh, hold it in place to swivel. There you go, nice and tight. Take my snips and snip off that tag end like so and there we go whatever you do when you're doing this make sure you don't do what i just did and let the uh let the fluorocarbon birds nest so just gonna fix that right now and there we go i've got the uh i've got the reel with uh, with my uh my swivel on it so next I've got to attach my torpedo weighted steel. Now that I've got the swivel on the end of the fluorocarbon, now I need to connect the weighted steel. So what I'm going to do here is I need to put a, uh, I need to, I'm going to use the crimp method. So what I've got to do is uh, I've got my weighted steel, as you can see right here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide on a piece of heat shrink tubing. Next I'm going to slide on one of the torpedo provided crimps you'll see so that's that's those two started and now I'm going to put that swivel on I'm now going to fold it over and slide the weighted steel back through the other end of the other side of that of that crimp I'm going to pull that crimp all the way down. So as you can see right there, I've got a swivel with a crimp through the weighted steel. And that is pulled all the way down. So now I'm going to take a pair of line cutters and I'm going to cut, I'm going to crimp this in two places. So I'm going to take it, crimp down once, crimp down twice. That is going absolutely nowhere. So as you can see right there, it's all crimped, ready to go. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tag end off. Don't need that. So with those snips again, cut the tag end off. And now I want to remove that, uh, that heat shrink tube all the way up. And this is where you're going to need a lighter or in my case, I've got a barbecue lighter here. Um, and I'm going to heat up that shrink tubing so it shrinks down. There we go. And then give it a twist. And there you go. Now we're connected. So now if I flip back uh, my views here, now it's where I got to start winding all this line onto my reel. So grab my fluorocarbon, make sure I've got some drag, and now you'll see I've got the fluorocarbon, I've got the weighted steel, and it goes right through the eye. And from there, I have my weighted steel ready to be wound onto uh, wound onto this uh, this reel. Now give me a second here while I get my, make sure my weighted steel doesn't tangle on me. There we go. Okay. And we'll slowly wind it on. Now what, one thing you want to do, you do want to try and keep some tension on this. You know, while, uh, while we are going to reverse, uh, spool it back onto the other reel, it is, uh, it is good to have some, uh, have some tension on it while I'm spooling it on. This one's a pretty, uh, pretty short core, uh, with a, 
a hundred weight of steel, so it shouldn't take me too long to get this particular uh, spool all spooled up onto this uh, this Dakota 600. Some people might say to me, wow, a Dakota 600, isn't that a pretty small reel? Um, yeah, it's not a huge reel. Uh, the most I would put on uh, one of these is a uh, 100 weight of steel. I often do use a, uh, a 50 or a 75 on these. This particular one, I do want to put a 100 on it. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm using a 35, uh, a 35 uh, pound uh, um, braid backing because I want to have the uh, I want to have the room for uh, for as much backing as I possibly can, and I can still get a good amount of backing on this particular uh, rod or this reel. Sorry, I should say. So now uh, I've got the end of the weighted steel right here, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go grab another one of my little. Uh, my little swivels here from Torpedo, and let's get that out of the bag here. Everything's so small here. I should put my glasses on. Um, so I've got the swivel right here in my hand. It's tiny. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but before I put the swivel, I want to take uh, the, shrink, the shrink tube, put the shrink tube on. Then I want to put that crimp on. And now we want to take that, uh, take that little swivel, put that on, and then fold it over like we did the other side. Slide that through the crimp, and slide the crimp all the way down. I'll tell you, I've been using weighted steel for a long time, and I've been playing around with the different methods to terminate. And uh, I tell you, this is by far the easiest method. I, you know, I've used. Uh, I've used uh, heavier sections of braid with uh, all bright knots. I've used some of the different ways of actually unraveling and then raveling the weighted steel. And I'll tell you, this is the simplest, easiest way. Uh, put a crimp on there, couple of a uh, couple of uh, marks with a uh, or crimps with a snip uh, set of snips, and you're done. Cut off the tag end, and you're essentially ready to fish. You know. My opinion is adding the um, adding the shrink tube is just to make sure it goes through the the eyes uh, nicely without uh, without uh, breaking anything because even without the shrink tube it, it's it's completely fine. Just make sure I heat that up. Wet my fingers. Give it a twist, and that's good to go. Now I've got the other end, as you can see right there, with that uh, with that shrink tube and with that swivel. Now I'm going to take some braid. I've got a I've got a multicolor braid here that I have. It's a 35 pound. Um, when it comes to braid, I do not use anything special. There's a lot of different braids available on uh, on Amazon. Uh, I've I've played around with a number of them with good success. What I'll actually do in this video is I'll put a I'll put a link to some of the different braids that I've used from Amazon with uh, with good success. Um, and what's nice is they're pretty inexpensive. I think for 10 15 bucks you can get a you know a, a 300 meter uh, or 300 foot spool which is just what you need uh and uh, you know i you know i can probably do two of these reels with that because i think i'm going to get about uh i think i'm going to get about 500 feet on the back of this particular reel so i've just connected this braid and i'm about ready to go i just want to make sure i get the uh Get the, the way to steal nice and clean without any bird's nest. And it is through. So now uh, I'm going to spool up my braid onto, uh, onto this particular uh, reel. Now normally I'd actually put this on my line spooler. I did not do that today. Uh, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm cheating per se, but it's okay. I've just got it on the floor. Reasoning being is I'm gonna be reverse spooling this. So any, any twist that does happen again to this braid, I'm going to be taking it off, so it's not a, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, so I'm, I'm just rolling this right on, right onto this, uh, this, uh, this reel right now. And uh, I'm going to get a fair amount on this. I think this spool I have here is about half, uh, half empty or half full, whichever way you want to look at it. So I think I'm going to be able to get about 500 feet of, uh, of braid onto this, um, onto this reel because it's so thin. I think it's uh, I think it's about 0.3 of a millimeter is this braid, so very very thin, and that's why braid is just a fantastic backer for uh, 
for uh, when you're putting together uh, copper and lead core or weighted steel setups like this particular one right now. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, the weighted steel. Uh, it works really well, and uh, mating it up with some braid is just a, is a, just a fantastic, uh, fantastic ticket. So hopefully uh, that's showing you how I'm going to reverse spool it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over in a second, and I'm going to show you how I then connect the two reels together and now bring it back onto the reel that I actually want to, uh, to use permanently on the boat. So bear with me and I'll show you that. Okay, so now we're at the final stage. What you'll see is I have spooled up this reel with uh, full with backer. Um, I want to say I've got about 600 feet of backer on here. And uh, what I've done is I've now taken it out of the, out of the, uh, the line guide on the reel. And I'm now going to connect it with the, um, the monofilament I have on the reel that I actually plan to use. And in this is case, this is where I'm going to use uh, a double uni knot or, or an Albright knot, one of the, one of the two. Um, in this particular case, I think I'm going to use a double uni. So I'm going to tie that onto uh, this backer. Bear with me while I do this. It does, you know, I actually don't believe this knot is really too important because this knot is right at the bottom of the reel. I'm never going to let, if you know, if it, if it gets all the way down to this knot, we got bigger problems. We're about to get broken off as we're running out of line. So, you know, for me, I use double new knee, but, uh, you know, I've also uh, used double overhand before because we never, we never really get down to, uh, we never really get down to this knot. If we do, next thing going to happen is there's going to be a big snap when, uh, when it reaches the end. Okay, so now you'll see we're connected. I'm gonna cut the tag ends off with my scissors here. Okay, and the first thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna take the slack. So now you'll see they're connected. And then what I wanna do is, I wanna, you know, I wanna see how much drag I've got on here and I can start to adjust the drag. So, I can adjust the drag and as you can see here, I'm bringing that line, I'm bringing the line onto the, uh, onto the reel I want now. So I'm just winding it on, lots of, uh, as much drag as I want, so I've got tension on it. And that will allow me to, uh, to bring this on uh, with, uh, with tension on the reel. Uh, so, so this avoids uh, having to let this out when I get on the boat. And it also makes sure I've got a nice and tight, um, Nice and tightly spooled up, uh, you know, 100 weighted steel. So, you know, I, there's not really a need to show you guys this particular, you know, me winding it all on. But basically, I'll just keep going and going and going, bringing it on. And then once I've got it all, uh, all the backer, all that weighted steel onto, uh, onto this particular reel, uh, I will add on a torpedo uh, um, snap swivel. I'll probably use a number... Uh, a number four on this particular rod reason being is I will also run a uh, a leader with just a regular snap which I did in an earlier video to show you guys how I get more action out of my spoons because this 100 weighted steel 99.9 .9 times out of 10 um, it's gonna have uh, a spoon on for me probably a, a you know a three a three and three quarters four inch spoon uh, typically it's uh, like I said it's a steelhead or a coho rod so it's gonna have some with some orange on it. That's typically what I use this particular setup for. That being said, uh, if these were Dakota 700s or Dakota 800s, I could be doing the exact same thing, spooling on a 200 weighted steel, 250, 300, 350, 400. Like I said, Dakota 600s, I'll use a 50 segment, a 75 segment, and a 100 segment. So I hope you find this, uh, this video valuable. Uh, it is a longer video as I kind of walked you through how I do the reverse spool method. But um, lots of benefits to the reverse spool method. Also something that you can do on your own. You don't need to have a second person holding a spool with a screwdriver. Um, so anyways, if you like my videos and you like my channel, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And also that like button out helps me out a great deal as a YouTube content producer. Hope you find this valuable. Uh, give, uh, give Torpedo Way to Steal a try. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. Years ago I, was a, uh, I ran uh, you know, copper. I, I, you know, pretty much thrown it all away. I don't use it anymore. Uh, tor torpedo weighted steel. It's super easy, um, easy to use. Uh, doesn't bird's nest when you're letting it out. If it does bird's nest a little bit, you just give it a tug 
and uh, you're off fishing again. You'll never do that with copper. Anyways, hope you find this uh, useful. Uh, good luck in 2022, folks, and I'll keep these videos coming. Talk to you later. Goodbye.